All right, good morning, YouTube. William here. Gonna do a, a quick project. I uh, I bought this Harrogator, and I uh, I I've had a Harrogator in the past. They're always a major pain in the butt because they rely on the cylinder to keep them in the transport position. This machine doesn't have a cylinder, so what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to build a transport lock, and since we have uh, almost a dozen forklifts, tractors, skid steers, uh, backhoes, we can get it lifted uh, and uh, and keep the tongue out of the dirt. And whenever we need to hook on to it, we'll be able to just go out there, hook on with a tractor, and, and take it down the road. Uh, I took a measuring tape. I won't be able to do this one-handed. Uh, and I measured the center to center on each one of these holes. And it came out to 28 and a half inch. And when the back tires raise, uh, the center to center closes up. So I'm going to put the center to center on my uh, transport lock at 28 inches. Okay, this is just some stuff I have laying around the shop. I've got a quarter inch, inch and a half uh, square tube I'm going to use and then I'm going to run out to the iron worker and cut this quarter inch by six inch plate uh, at two inches and then I can get uh, three inches welded to my square tube and then before I do that I'm going to set my jig up and punch these out uh, accordingly so I can get my locking pins in. Uh, and then I think this will be plenty heavy. Uh, Harrogators are kind of a heavy animal, but we're only running down the road at 15 miles an hour. So This is a uh, quick little sketch of what it is. Uh, don't laugh at me, I'm no artist, but I can build it in my head. And uh, this will give me a, a nice uh, corner bevel joint that I can weld. That's why these plates are cut at two inches instead of inch and a half like these are. Probably get plenty of penetration with an inch and a half, but this gives me extra meat for my uh, one inch holes. Okay, we're out here in the machinist bay. I uh, got our uh, Scotchman 5514CM iron worker. I uh, really love this thing. Got it out of southern Illinois uh, from a guy building race car parts. Um, can't complain about it. Does everything I want it to do. Um, this unit has a, a laser. Don't know if it'll turn up on camera. It's kind of off. Uh, probably would help if I would read my uh, instruction manual. But uh, I like to just use this light and then I run the, uh, the shear blade down uh, dead center of these marks. Um, this unit had a, uh, a big barrel sticking out the back that bolted here for a backstop that I could have just ran to two inch and, uh, and been a lot uh, faster, but uh, we're always out of room in here and it was like a 48 inch long barrel um, and we got limited space. So this is what you deal with. Uh, this is a lot faster than plasma cutting and grinding or lining it up on the uh, Ellis and cutting it out. So uh, with that said, we're going to shear this piece at uh, two inches just with the uh, press of a foot pedal. Beautiful. I don't know about you, YouTube, but that's hot. Here in the uh, top of the toolbox, we've got all our uh, different punches, uh, slot dies, square dies. Uh, these are the odd sizes, like uh, 17 30 seconds, uh, 19 60 fourths, that weird stuff like that. We never really get uh, that kind of precise. Uh, so these are all your basic standards like 7 eighths, 3 eighths, stuff like that. 
Uh, so I'm just going to uh, pick my uh, one inch die up. We walk over here to the Scotchman. Uh, I just let the tools kind of lay there. Never really hurt them. Um, then I'm just going to uh, unscrew this nut. Make sure the machine's off and your foot's well away from the pedal. Uh, and uh, change out this die and then we're going to punch these out. Okay, I've got my uh, center marked out. Just used a Sharpie. Uh, my mark all uh, bright red wasn't uh, turning out too well. I think there's a dab of oil on this. Um, I only have to mark one of these and then I use a, uh, a Davies center punch. Uh, I like Davies. I got one I uh, just found in the in the uh, cabinet, sharpened it up, fell in love with them. Uh, I don't even know if you can buy these anymore. I found a whole set at a garage sale for like five bucks. Uh, love them, love them, love them. Uh, so I'm just going to line this up just by sight. doesn't have to be insanely accurate. And then I will show you a trick on the iron worker to streamline this process. And you can really chomp out multiple parts uh, in just a matter of, uh, of minutes instead of drilling all these. And these aren't even marked. I only have to mark the one. Okay, I'm here at the iron worker. I've got my one inch die installed. Uh, these you have to manually install. Uh, the punch and line them up. This isn't a, a, a TM, which is a turreted uh, Scotchman center punch. Uh, looked at one, it was way out in Nevada, and, uh, and this one was just closer and uh, cheaper, and I got every attachment for it. A uh, little side note there. So, okay, I have my center punch here. I probably hit this two or three times with that Davy, uh, Davy's center punch there. Uh, right on an anvil, that way you get uh, a good whop on it. Now, I have this center punched. Anybody that's uh, kind of familiar with a puncher, punching machine knows they have a little nipple on there. So, uh, this is not a damaged die, it's just a piece of dust there. Uh, so now, I take this, line it up on that nipple, and it can't move around. I'm wiggling it, nothing's happening. Now, you do not want your fingers under here trying to line this up like that. The machine's off right now, so I can do that. Never recommended. You want to raise from your side. On this kind of uh, piece, I can actually hold it out front, and then once it's punched, I'll show you my trick. Starting the machine. I'm already set up to the uh, punch side. So, I'm going to punch this now kind of a trick to get one-handed and I'm kind of looking through the screen now with just the foot pedal fingers out of course double check oh we like that now I'm going to turn the machine off with my foot still depressed now I can raise up now I bring this is uh, this is what pulls the uh, die out of the part you just cut but I can't really film uh, any good quality with that on there so uh, also it's harder to find your nipple uh, so now I slide this piece up and we're just building you know this is kind of a, a shop made uh, piece so we're not going for crazy accuracy here we're, we're not building a space shuttle this works fine you can get crazy accurate with these machines it's not necessary today so all I'm going to do is line up my backstop here has this uh, beautiful 90 degree edge on it and uh, and then I center it on the die and then I lock it down with these screws I won't be able to show this part because uh, I don't have three arms uh, but you get the gist anybody that's worked with iron uh, and then I will show chomping out the rest of the parts with no marks and no center punch needed all right I'm gonna install our part puller now I'm going to release the foot pedal. I can live with that. Now, all I have to do is stick my next part in since I have my back installed and just keep chomping them out. They come out the same every time.
I can live with that. All right, back out here at the Harrogator. Uh, I have my three inch line marked where my square tubing is tentatively going to end. Something you want to go check when you're building a, a transport lock. I've done this before on a, on a grain drill we had. Uh, I had my uh, tubing, I think it was actually just quarter inch flat stock, too close. And it would not work with these holes. And that is not fun when you're getting a plasma cutter out on something you just welded the dickens out of. When all you needed to do was move your square tubing back a half of an inch. So I have my hole lined up on this. Looks like it would work. Uh, I have, don't know about down there yet. But I actually think I'm going to move that back probably a half of an inch just to give me some wiggle room. Hi, puppers. See here, hole lined up tentatively, still moving it back that uh, that half of an inch, just to be safe. Okay, this is my highly scientific way of finding center to center. Uh, like I said, we're just building something for an old uh, farm implement. Uh, I've already got a half inch of play both ways. I just lined up the mark I had on the uh, on the uh, the little piece that's going to become the yoke, and line up that hole to 28 inches. All right, that came out to uh, 23 and 9 sixteenths of an inch on this. Uh, just kind of shotgunning it, shooting from the hip. Uh, we're not talking anything. We're not building a uh, rocket. So just uh, flip on our Ellis, set our uh, air valve, let it drop. Just got a brand new blade put on this Ellis. Speed up the hair with the hair. Alright, got it set up here, recheck my holes for center to center, everything's coming out just beautiful. I'm uh, just going to get a couple of tack welds on the inside here, uh, not really worried about it uh, curling either way because once I get everything tacked, I'm going to stick it in the vise and squeeze it and then it doesn't have any choice but to submit. Found, I found over the years that uh, sticking a pin in this before you start getting tacks and things, uh, really helps for the uh, fit up and alignment process. Okay, hindsight being 2020, I probably would have punched these to a uh, inch and a sixteenth because uh, when you punch something, it kind of gets a uh, almost a bevel edge on it, and uh, it was kind of tight uh, getting this one inch rod in there. Uh, this one was actually kind of shifted when I was packing, and it was kind of cocked in there like that. So uh, not a big deal if you know uh, what tools are uh, at your disposal. Uh, use this uh, metal burr. You can get these at uh, Fastenal, I know. Um, I'm sure that you can get them elsewhere. Probably Amazon has hundreds of them. I've got about four different sizes uh, with uh, cone one all the way down to a uh, quarter inch. But uh, hindsight's 20-20. That goes in there, plenty good, plenty of play. It's gonna rust a little bit. I can live with that. All right, now that we have our holes reamed, I'm just gonna use this uh, standard uh, one inch shaft we just have laying around. Uh, we got tons of this. This comes out of a, a seed cleaner that we have to cut to get it out. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a couple of uh, quick connect pins, uh, probably weld a chain on them so they're always with the uh, transport lock and we'll go from there. Sorry for the video quality but I'm not the only guy working in the shop today. Okay, I'm uh, out here on the uh, LS3000 bandsaw. 
It's a little bit of overkill. We're cutting this one inch round stock. Uh, this saw will do 13 and a half inches round at uh, 90 degrees, which is what we're cutting at. Uh, I already set my, uh, my backstop, so I've cut multiple parts. I already cut one of the four inch pin we need. And uh, so I loosen the vise, slide it in. My vise is a little war, so I have to lift on it to keep it true. Tighten it up. Okay, we got our pins made. Uh, I like to throw a dab of paint on any project. Keeps the rust off, helps your resale value, um, and uh, it just makes a project, any project, just look better. Uh, it took probably two, three minutes tops, and you just get a such better looking uh, product and uh, finished result. Uh, I have to go up to uh, Rural King and get some um, uh, the flip over hitch pin uh, pins and uh, and then we'll be able to put it on the harrogator get it out in the fence row all right guys that's what a job looks like that's done right nice little coat of paint even though the rest of it's an old uh, rusty farm implement uh, plenty strong I'm sure it'll hold up to the road bouncing I'm jumping up and down on it not a problem for me. We'll see you next time.